a lot of you who are taking our courses, you you have been having some questions around some things. So I've collected the major questions that we're going to tackle today. And also for those of you, you know, you are not taking our course, no problem. This is completely free for everybody and you're going to gain also from what we are going to cover. So my name is Michael Olafusi. I'm a six times Microsoft MVP. The model that we built while working on the training is one for an healthcare company, a healthcare company. So this healthcare company, uh, CK Healthcare Limited, they, what they do is what is really relevant to this environment, right? Okay, so I, this is what we built, right? For some of you who have not taken the course, no problem. I'm going to walk you through what a financial model really is. So in every company's life cycle, there are three critical stages, right? So for every company, so for every company, uh, com company A, B, C, there are always three critical stages to a company's existence. There is always the start startup phase, you know, where the company, you know, was just an idea in someone's head and they are now committing to uh, pursuing that idea and setting up a company to implement, you know, that business idea, then, you know, that's the startup phase. And uh, at this stage, yes, there will be, there will be the business model. So there will be the business model. And, uh, there will also be, because the business model just captures like the grand idea, the business opportunity, existing worthwhile, and so share the grand picture. But whenever it comes to actually getting investors on board, ramping up resources financially to start, you will need to have a financial model. Okay, so that financial model is important to capture okay what are the business products we're making uh what are going to be the expenses like the investment we're going to make will go or the investments we're going to get we go into what kind of capital and non-capital expenditure and then over the course of time many years what's going to be the profit that will have come out from this business so yes we're going to do a financial model when the startup you know, has gotten to that stage where all the logics, the strategy have been firmed up. So you will notice that this model here, which I will show you for those of you who are not familiar with this one, uh, it's starting, it's, it's doing for a startup, you know, saying that this company has not been in existence before. And then we start fleshing out all the things about the company that um, needs to create the complete financials, even down to the valuation. Then at a stage when a business has started and is already, you know, in business kind of, right? Uh, there will be points in the business stage where there will be expansion. So expansion. Again, in expansion, uh, if you're doing it in a big way where you need to bring in outside capital, it could even be just to take a loan from a bank and they want to see your, your financials. Uh, so again, on some level, if you're doing it really big, you want to also do a financial model to show this money we are borrowing, where is it going to? You know, how will it uh, impact the operations and the ability of the business to repay the loan or to give back some returns to those who are contributing this money? Even if it's you, the owner of the business, that you're going to put in more of your other capital into it. You want to see how this will play out over the life time of the business and more importantly you want to know what percentage of your company to give equity investors for for loan you know for banks they just want to see the ability for you to be able to repay so they want to see how when we give you this money how you will deploy it and then how you'll be able to cover the interest expense and then also the worth of the assets so that you know they can know that there is an asset to grab if things don't go well right 
And um, so when a company is in either this ex startup or expansion, and I said there are three, right? Uh, so it might not be that you're expanding this period. You just want to, you want to sell your business. You know, you found some people who are interested in buying the company, or they just want to take it off from you. So again, you will want to do a financial model to, to capture the present state of the company, the plans, and then what the valuation of the company will be. If you're going to do a DCF, which you definitely will do because it's that model that every uh, in every acquisition people want to see it. Even if you decide to do other like the comparative analysis and the other market based uh, valuation. So you are starting you're a startup, you're starting up your business, financial model is important. You're expanding, again, financial model is important, especially when you need to draw on outside capital and resources, financial resources for that expansion. And then if you are going to sell the business, you know, some buyers want to, you could, this selling could even be you want to list, you know, you want to do an IPO. Again, you will have to do uh, specifically a financial model to support that particular uh, activity. And so uh, I'm going to wipe off the screen. And this is the typical flow. A financial model uh, will always have where the a, a separate input part. So you will notice here, this is it. So where you put in the financial, the plans of the company, you know, the input, what products are we making? This company is going to be making one, two, three, four products, right? So what are the unit economics? What are the unit economics? Let me just write that. It's critical, you know, per, per product price, per product cost, per the direct cost, and all of that that you, you need to break all of this revenue that you make into those granular uh, supporting underlying activities. And so uh, this product is into face mask, hand sanitizer, test tube, or this company is into those things, the syringes. And these are the unit costs, unit price, you know. And also too, there will be some admin expenses that we go, you know, consulting fees, director's fees. So all of these things are the breakdown of the expenses. And then the marketing expenses also, and if there's going to be any research and development, if you're going to take up any loan, what's the tax rates? Uh, if again different, we make allowance for you to be able to plug in multiple loans, you know, loan from a director, loan from a bank, loan from some other financing entity, and then equity injection, be it as ordinary shares, be it as preference shares, and then the capital expenditure, right? And also the how the working capital is going to to be forecasted. You know how many days you're going to have inventory in stock, how long to get money from your from your from your buyers, how long it takes you to pay your suppliers. So all these things are useful in in forecasting the working capital. And then there's the the salaries, the, the payrolls, kind of like the staff cost, right? So the directors, the different categories of, of directors, if you probably have more than one category of a director, so you can be able to put in how much you're paying them per year or per quarter, and then the different staff you will need to hire to make this work, right? And then there's the scenario where you're able to say, okay, uh, for all of these plans we have, things will generally not always work as planned, you know, things can change. Coronavirus can happen or something similar. And also, it might, it's not always negative. Things can really work out really well. Even the coronavirus is benefiting some industries. Maybe this kind of industry is one such, you know, where people are buying a lot of face masks and hand sanitizers. And so you want to, you want to make it possible that the, the model captures different scenarios what is happening if things really go better than we plan? What will happen if things go worse than we plan? What's like the worst case kind of scenario? But then conservatively, you know, with our market analysis and our due diligence, what is the things that will happen? And then you plug all of that into the into the model, and this captures that. 
and uh, as you plug them in instantly they flow into building out for us what the revenue breakdown will be like and so you're able to see you know what is the revenue going to look like so you see based on those those, those product lines what the revenue will be which is a combination of the units that will be sold and the unit price and uh, that does that for the revenue schedule and then there's the cost of skills cost of sales schedule where you also are doing something similar in terms of capturing uh, what the unit cost will be then the volumes that will be sold by those products okay uh, sold per those products <laughs> then the working capital which is where you are able to get from you know your revenue how much of those your revenue will be in in receivable you know how much of it will still be hanging outside there with your buyers then your cost of sales how much of it will you be hoeing your suppliers at every point in time and then your inventory so also how much of your money is going to be tied up in inventory so how many days inventory will you have and then other current assets other current liabilities again uh, all of these are formula tied the moment you change the input here they flow directly into all of these schedules so the working capital schedule well, i've just finished talking about that then what about your capital expenditure so for every of those different capital assets you are buying right building plant and machinery so every one of them they there is depreciation you know that you have to factor in so there is a formula all of that are in this just make sure you are connected to all of our community so that any communication we send you get them let me just at this point check if uh, there are any questions that people have asked someone is asking out of curiosity where am i broadcasting from uh so i'm broadcasting from lagos nigeria so, so at this stage uh, you get the whole drift as for how the entire model uh, is following some some structure that all cascades you know from imputes down to all the different so the depreciation where we're going to get the book value and then from there we're going to get what we use to do some aspect of the cash flow which is capital expenditure which we're going to cash from investing then this will go into income statements into the depreciation and amortization and the net book value we go into the balance sheet so you see how all of these ties together and uh, there's also the debt schedule where you're going to be fleshing out what happens to the cash and uh, the loans the repayment if there's any bank overdraft like some kind of revolving uh, short-term loan you can access and also the equity where you capture how much equity you raise what category of of equity you've raised and the conditions attached to them as regards to dividend and as regards to even the retain any which will feed into our balance sheet we also come in here and also some aspect of it especially the in dividend they will go also into cash flow from financing and so you see that all what you will be sifting from your business plan and uh, attaching to dates you know because that's the other thing in the business plan you can be very you can be very you know verbose you can be very grand and say okay in the next five years we plan to spend this on on, on equipment on assets but in the financial statement you have to write exactly when you are spending it otherwise there's not going to be a financial statement in the financial model i mean there's not going to be a financial statement or an entire uh, very useful model if you don't attach time so that's one thing entrepreneurs find very difficult when i'm dealing with them for their financial models they they they, they just keep rambling on on their plans on how much they're going to spend how much they're going to raise and then i say you know what give me the date start putting this by date so that uh we can now be able to create the financial model so you will have to tell your client that you know all those don't just let them send you some word document with the plans you know you send them yours so i typically just send them you know what i 
yeah, your document is good. It helps me to see the, how you came about all these figures and it makes it easier for me to know whether these figures are optimistic or pessimistic or conservative. And you know, I can stress test your figures, but then I needed to put them in attached to the dates. So that way we can be able to create things like depreciation and all those things that we need. In fact, everything needs to be attached to a date. And um, from there, we move on to the tax, which doesn't have so much of a thing in need because it's just to compute what's the tax rate and then what are the typical differences that happen based on the government uh, recognition of assets that are deductible and what you would have captured as your, your tax profit before tax. So, expenses that are deductible. Then um, income statements. Then the income statement, the standard income statement, all of these are coming from those, those schedules that we have done. So you notice, maybe I should just uh, let you see that all of these are formulas that are coming directly from those schedules. So you can see they are all coming from those schedules, right? So you want to do these ones first. You want to create the schedules first before you start thinking of doing the income statement. And to create the schedules, right, you need to get the inputs, the plans that the company have tied to dates and figures. Okay. And then we do the balance sheet, which shows the financial position of the company year over year. And at least you want to do for five years if you can do for more, but you don't want to go too far into the future because that, you know, if you go too far, errors that will, you'll just be stressing yourself for, for very little gain because you can never be more very accurate too far into the future. And the financial model is a working document. The company is meant to be updating it with the actuals as the years roll by. So at the end of 2020, they will replace the figures with the actuals and then that those actuals become the foundation for the next forecast years. OK, then there's the, there's the cash flow, then there's the valuation itself. So now we go to the questions people have been raising when they were, went through the videos and the trainings. And question number one is, oh, Michael, during the training you used, you used the cost of equity as work that is wrong okay and yes you correct so i did a video to correct that uh, the cost of equity is not work the work has its own formula which uh very funny i had written it out but then again i that, that's why it's called a mistake so you go and check out the correction video and OK, and then another question someone said is I'm not able to calculate this um, long term market return rates. So this are our that we are going to need when computing the 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 work, you know, especially the capital asset, uh, the CAPM. Because we need the R a long term market return and to get the long term market return we said there's a formula in excel that you just go and grab what the return what the market was in a very long time ago so i chose uh for nigeria 1984 and then you go and grab what it is currently and then you plug in a formula that is going to work on both of them and the formula is called rr high and then you know you put in the number of period which is the years apart you know that's why this minus this and then you plug in the, the present value which is like what the bunny was at the beginning of the period and then you plug in the future value what the value is at the end of the period and voila you will get the long term uh, market return which uh, based on this computation is 16 percent so for those of you who don't have it uh, this formula is in Excel 2013 and above. So that's the issue you are facing. The fact that maybe your Excel is an older version. So if that's the problem uh, you had, then don't worry. Just know that um, 
maybe in your case, just type the 16%, uh, and um, or you can go online and get the formula. There is another very long formula that you can use to generate this, but uh, I would just say it's better to be on Excel 2013 and above. Okay, so another question some people had was, oh, in the equity, I picked something else. So for the uh, preference share, you know, the capital issuance here, I picked something wrong. So yes, I hope you had corrected it. So I think it was, I picked the um, building. I picked building, expense on building instead of a, uh, instead of, instead of a preference share issuance. So some of you noticed it and raised up the concern, uh, but then I hope that uh, now that I'm mentioning it, everybody is aware that it was an error. I should have picked this and not this while I was doing that uh, preference shares issuance uh, in the equity in the equity schedule. Okay, so now that that is out of the way, uh, let me just go quickly check again if any question has been raised. And okay, so I can see there are other questions that have been that have come up. I have zero, let me just publish it. I have zero knowledge on financial modeling. How long does it take to perfect this skill? Okay, so how long does it take to perfect this skill? If you have zero knowledge on financial modeling, uh, let me put it out there too so other people can be able to answer. And I will come back to the question. I think it's the same question the person kept typing it multiple times. So I'm going to come in here and put in a reply. And then if you have zero knowledge on financial modeling, hmm, there are two sides to financial modeling. Huh? It's not just the Excel. You know, Excel is a tool. This model that we are building in Excel is just the tool side of it. There is the knowledge side of it. So you will have to typically start by having finance and accounting knowledge. There is a level of finance and accounting that you need to know to be able to even understand how all these matters and what everything means and you know how you can understand all that is happening in a company in terms of its um, how they generate transactions and all of that. So I have a, I think I have a video or some resource that I show. Let me just try to bring it up. I show a company uh, and this company has, you know, it's just on paper, you know, absolutely from scratch, how the company, all that they are doing on paper, how they translate into financial transactions, and then how you can pick those things and you can then, um, let's see, I think it's called Niger Limited. And let me just look for the document that captures uh, the activity I am talking about. So let's see. Okay, so you'll see this document, maybe I'll share with you. It, it's what I use sometimes to help people to understand that um, that financial modeling, there is a theory side of it that every company, every business entity, whatever they do generates transactions. You know, when you set up your business and when you set up, you know, you guys are setting up with maybe a billion naira. Yes, that becomes a billion naira cash asset, zero liability. And then because you are putting it in the business, that's one billion naira equity. And then, you know, you bought a land of 300 million Naira. You see that becomes 300 million Naira assets that you have to take out cash from. And then, you know, nothing happened on the liabilities and on the equity side. So there's always three sides to, to every activity in, a, in the company. There's always the, you know, 
the assets you know equal to liability plus equity the accounting equation so every movement will balance out side sort of right some will just be movement that you are just reshuffling uh things in the asset side some might be movement where okay something happens here and then the balancing side need to happen on this other side so uh maybe i'll share this resource so that you can see how you can at least have a roadmap to what you need to be aware of because this is meant to be a refresher for those who come for our training and you know their accounting knowledge is a bit rusty or they have so much left all these basics they do a lot more of pressing you know using software and they've lost uh track with all of these things that uh, relate to the, the, the basics of why what is happening they are happening and then that way you can be able to take a company's uh, ledger general ledger and, and, and generate the financials from it and even do financial statement and then be able to also help them with financial planning so all of these are things that you need to be aware of so this is what i was mentioning that you know this is a company where they are just telling you with their mouth with words all that they've done oh we bought a building oh we hired 10 people and then you have to turn all of these things into transactions so they explain them to you they give you the the bank statement ex uh, export and then you they give you some some receipts some evidences so that you be sure that these are not fictitious things they are telling you and then what do you do you begin to create a journal again this is low skill you typically you want to use a software where you plug those things in and they do all of this for you but then you want to know how to do them from scratch also too right and then at the point you begin to do the the financial statement uh somehow i have another pdf where all of that is showing maybe i will just show you the excel file where if you are done what all those stories that the company has told you this is what they will eventually lead to. Uh, so I'm going to. I noticed some people did say, oh, the 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 training focused so much on on doing the model in Excel, and then what about the concepts? Uh, the truth is, the model or the training was focused a lot more for those people who already have some accounting knowledge, who are accountants, because the the truth is, in our training classes, the the this training is factored you know as the with the training class as the as the as the model that we idea we were following so we noticed that yeah uh, the the participants especially if you have ICANN, you've done on all, any of all these accounting certification you'll be so grounded in the accounting fundamentals that it will be boring for you you just want to move on with doing the high value aspect you know and besides you can always brush up on it if you feel there's some aspect that you've forgotten uh somehow the this is taking eternity to open up so uh when it opens up i'm going to i'm going to just show you how all of those uh let me just bump up the the okay let's see if that will okay so that worked the magic huh? <laughs> that's the goodness of being a bit techy huh? so all of those transactions they bought a the property they put in some money they made sales the customer was owing them all of those things leads to this kind of journal based and then if you want a much more paper like approach you create like a t t account and you show how all those movements are affecting different you know the asset side the liability and the equity side you know and then from there we can come up with uh at the end the the you know assets you know totaled on the debit side and then the things on the different um chart of account total on the right on the side they should be totaled at and then you know you come up with a trial balance so for some people maybe if you come for accounting for non-accounting finance and accounting for non-finance managers aha these are the kind of things we teach there so that's like 100 level this financial modeling is like 200 level and 300 level combined kind of 
then 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 so this is more like the hundred level where you understand you know the trial balance how it's created how it's adjusted to be accrual based so that you capture things for the period they happen not just cash based anymore and then from there you're able to generate the income statement you know and then from there you're able to generate the balance sheets you know and then from there you're able to do the cash flow statement and when i say from there from what from these stories that uh, hey, where are those stories anymore uh, i thought i opened it okay i opened it as a word document from these stories these explanations of we bought these we started the business on this on this day on so all these stories are uh, they are what i have extracted to generate this financial statement so this is what happens for small businesses where they just give you their bank statement and they just give you some some receipts some stories some some email emails for you to just collate the stories from and create all of these so this is like a, a pre, pre a precursor to you being able to do the actual financial model so the financial modeling training expects that you already know that and you're conversant with those things okay and uh, another question that people kept uh we're not everybody so let me just take you through to where uh people mentioned this so if on the cost review on udemy yes if i go to the, where's the review session so i thought i was on the review session before now so i'm going to just go right back there so for the financial modeling and uh i clicked on the wrong thing again maybe that was where i made the mistake <laughs> I'm supposed to click on the review. Yes, see the ratings, the reviews. OK, so there were a lot of reviews. Oh, this is this. The cost was awesome. Um, I have learned a lot to, to be able to do a lot of things. You know, people get a lot, gave a lot of wonderful reviews. Oh, I love this course. Uh, it taught me skills, blah, blah. It was amazing. You know, a lot of good reviews. But then if I'm just reading the good reviews, I won't be able to improve what you are getting, right? So what did I do? I went to this and say, let us see the people that gave it one star, two star. What was the things they were complaining about? So let's start checking it out. Some did not give anything. They just one star, two star. Maybe they don't like me or I can't say. But then some people started saying some things and I felt what they are saying is true when I went to check. So this person said, I have an issue with the way he is speaking. Oh, that is depressing for me. But then uh, one can never, you know, stop improving. So it's a problem, right? So I went to check. Hmm, in class training, people don't have problem with the way I'm talking. You know, even when I teach people who are not Nigerians or foreigners who it could even be even on my online classes. You know, there are some classes I hold where it's live class like this. People hear me well. So then what's the issue if he says he can't hear me? And he's an Indian and I, I interact with a lot of Indians and I've not had that problem before. So I went to check. So I went into my video and I started playing it as a student will have it. And I noticed there was an issue actually. When I was producing the recording, the software I use for producing. So if you see my reply here, I the software I use for producing has a noise remover settings, which is good because you want to remove noise, right? You don't want the participant to hear the humming of the computer. But the problem is I, I think I did it too much. Like I set the level too high and it began muffling my voice. So even me, I noticed that this is not my voice. This is really sounding very muffled, right? So I am already replacing the videos. Uh, for Power BI, I have replaced them all. For financial modeling, you would even see uh, I'm still working on them, right? I, uh, by the end of tomorrow, I should be done. Uh, it's, till night, I was still working on them. So you, this is the same thing too. Uh, these other people complained about. So they're like, uh, the audio was, is horrible. I don't mind his accent, so thank you for that. He doesn't mind my accent. Uh, but I couldn't hear what he was saying. 
and uh, it made the course boring and the captions could not even get it right. And I'm guessing it's also because of that in problem. The muffled sound that the noise uh, audio setting for noise removal caused. And the same thing too for this person. He said it in French. Uh, Le professeur doit améliorer sa communication en anglais. The teacher must improve his communication in English. Oh, so I told him, oh, sorry, thanks for the feedback. I'm recreating. So I'll keep monitoring. I starting from next week, if anybody makes this kind of complaint again, then maybe I will go get somebody else to do my recording for me. Uh, hopefully not that. Or I do take a speech therapy class or something where they improve the way I speak, especially for for screencast for course recording. So that's that. Uh, let me go check. Any other questions people have raised? OK. Uh, since this is a repetition, 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 I'm dismissing. And um, published. OK, so if you have any other questions, do let me know. Now, for those of us who you are not taking my courses, right? And then you're like, hmm, this looks a lot more like uh, it's an internal stuff. It's looking a lot more like only those who are taking the courses, you know, uh, this is meant for them. No, I'm going to be able to direct you to, if you go on YouTube, if you go search me out on YouTube. So I have also put up some of these, you know, even for those of you that are taking the course, I will advise you also, Go on YouTube. So if you go on YouTube and you search me out, Olafusi Michael, if you just go to my channel, YouTube channel, uh, so youtube.com and, uh, you know, this youtube.com user slash Olafusi Michael, which is just my last name and my first name together, you're going to see a lot of resources that I've put up. And uh, because of time, I will not take you through all of them, but you will see those rec some, you know, you will see some of these that you don't have to go take the course. Yeah, you won't see everything, <laughs> but you see a lot enough to even jumpstart you. And if you know that you, this is going to be valuable for you, then yeah, you can take the course. And then um, for those of you that are taking the course, there is also another video I have for companies that are not startup, companies that are on the stock exchange, and now you'll be able to come up with the valuation of the company and know is the company trading at a at a fair value or not this is the video that i have that in uh, the reason why i have not put it on the course module yet is because i want to edit it and make it really uh you know it's really long <laughs> it's a three hours 30 minutes i have to do some work on it if i need to put it in the course so that's why it's not yet there but now you can for some time for 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 the uh, for the time now, you know, I might take it off from YouTube later, but for now you can go here and you watch this video and you see how to do a model for a company that is already existing. You know, a company that is on the stock exchange where you can just pick up their financial statements and you start creating a model for them and you're able to compare what your model says in terms of the stock price with what the company is trading at. And then you'll be able to say, oh, this company is trading at a, at a fair value, it's trading at a, it's trading at a discount. Then how do you access the support resources? So some people have been asking, oh, I'm on the course, but then how do I access the support resource? OK, so let's start from our premium platform. So on our premium platform. Uh, so if you are a participant in our premium platform, so let's say I log in. Again, I will have if, if you've sign up for on a premium platform, you will have gotten these steps in as a video. But then let me just demo it here since you are here already. I don't have to refer you back to a video again since you're already here. So let's see how it works. How do you access the training resources when you are in the course environment? Uh, why is this? OK, so great. So I go to my course. So I go to my courses, which is what you will do too when you are registered on our training platform. Our premium platform 
just for uh, announcement sake, is class.yourbizedge.com, right? So you can go there and log in and, and maybe buy any course you want. You get a lot more support, a lot more personalized touch than you will do if you buy on the Udemy because this one sells at a lot, a lot of money more than the Udemy. So we can't, uh, we can't treat everybody equally. We try to, originally this support was meant for just these people here, but for the time being due to the coronavirus, we said let's extend it to those on Udemy too, and then the general public also. So if I go to my course environment and I say, okay, I want to, you know, check out my course and uh, go to the curriculum. And go into the Why is it taking me right back? <laughs> OK, so I want to continue. Cool. Um, this is not the experience you will have. It's just because I'm logging in as both an admin and also as a student. So that's why it's giving me this funny experience. So I, let me just switch over to a different account and log in from there. So while that is happening, uh, I can, I can, let's see, I want to preview as a logged in user. I can at least show us how it happens for, okay, okay, so I'll fix that. And so this, if you're on a premium platform, right, all you just do is, um, when you're in a course environment, uh, you're in a course uh, environment and uh, the videos, you see the videos, you see this um, environment is different from the Udemy ones. It's, it's a bit more optimized. You can download the video. The Udemy guys cannot download video because, uh, well, that's one of the things they sacrifice. So for those who keep saying, hey, I want to download the video, you might want to uh, take up on a premium platform. So on the premium platform, you can download, right? You can download the resources. You always see them there. And if I go to another one that has a lot more resources, you will see, uh, you see the download files. So just make sure you download them, right? You don't just uh, watch the videos and think, oh, I'm done. I go to the next. There are resources you download. You can directly men message me and I'll see it and I'll, you know, let uh, reply. So this is our premium platform. Then if you're on the Udemy, so how is the experience like for you? So if I'm on Udemy, right? So let's say I go to Udemy and I say I, I want to check out the course as, as, a, as a student will. And then I show you how as a student, you will be able to you will be able to access the resources because people keep asking me, hey, I want to, uh, the practice files you are using, I can't see it. You cannot download the video, but the practice files you can. So let's go look for one of them and I show you. Okay, so I'm going to say I want to preview as a student so that you see how you as a student, you will see this video and I have 10 more, nine more minutes. So while you are here, right? Can you see these resources here? So I always want you to check this out. Don't just keep, uh, you know, thinking that I'm a wicked person who does not really care about you getting this, and I want you to, to type all of what you can't even remember, you know, with my screen flipping here and there. No, there are resources there. Just go there and download the resources. They're always showing on the right side beside the videos. And like that for all the lectures that have resources, you will always see the resources there, right? So please do that. Then some of you keep saying, oh, my screen is, uh, I should have zoomed out or it's blur or I should have recorded in HD. It's not me, it's your internet and your settings. Just go here and say you want to see it in the HD. Pick this and voila, you will start seeing the videos in high quality. 
And for those of you on our platform, uh, on Udemy, well, there is a restriction. You can't go beyond 720, right? Uh, which this 720 is really cool. If I put this on full screen, you know, you will see my screen really great, except if you're 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 watching on a small device, maybe a tablet. That's where you, you might start again having to complain that it's tiny, but it's not me, it is you, okay? But for those on our premium platform, you can even see up, or, up onto, so let me show you. You can set the resolution, you know, up onto 120, 180, yeah, one, the full HD, the one that is higher than 720, right? So 120 by 180 pixels. So that's the advantage those who are on our premium platform also get, they can scale it to that very crazy high, well, not crazy high, but that's full HD level. Uh, unfortunately, Udemy does not let those on Udemy be able to do up to that. Even though I uploaded that same level of quality, somehow they restricted to 720, so not my fault. Uh, okay, uh, what other questions have people asked? And um, let me just see if I've skipped anything. Uh, hey, so there's this question about why are we not using the formula today to generate the date stamp on the model? Hmm. So let me go back to the model. So this date here, the last updated, this date is like a versioning. It's a versioning. It's not a date that should be changing just by itself. It's just to let you know the last version of, you know, what version kind of. So, you know, what version is this report? So, if the last time I updated this model is 3rd of April, then that's the date that should be there. Not that just because I open it today, it should show today's date, because that's what happens when you go and you type, you know, what happened here? Huh? Okay, when you go and you type equal to, and you type, equal to today what keeps happening is every day changes tomorrow it will show tomorrow's date and that is confusing uh, the it's a working document you want to know you know when was this last updated so that way you'll be aware maybe this captures the newer feedbacks the newer updates that have come up maybe just recently you know if you see a model that was updated last in april and you know there were some new uh, things that came up this month and maybe like the beginning of this month, you know, you will not be surprised because once you can see this was last updated in April, you will know definitely this is not capturing those new information. And then you will be able to say, oh, this model needs to be updated. And when you update it, you again go back here and you specify that update. You know, I mean, that date that you last made the update. Okay, so let me check if any other question people have posted. Uh, I think I've answered everything. Okay, maybe just the cash flow statement, but I talk generally about every everything. So uh, that is good. And um, if you are interested in a premium class, you know, you want to get a premium experience, you don't want any limitations. You want to also get some kind of, uh, you know, access to more community support, being aware of events that we run offline also, not just online events then you will want to take advantage of our premium class here. So that's what separates this from the Udemy one, okay? But if you feel okay, uh, let me just go with the cheaper version. The Udemy is also good. We try to make sure you get the value. So it's not like that. We don't give you what we have promised. Uh, we only just go extra mile for those who pay us an extra to be on this one. So thank you very much. And it's exactly 3 p.m. and we end the, the session. So thank you. Have a nice, have a nice rest of the day.